Godzilla vs. Kong is right around the corner, and with all the hype surrounding the trailers, it's surprising that this is only the second time that the two monster heavyweights have fought for the title of Worldwide King of the Monsters. A follow-up to the 1962 King Kong vs. Godzilla never panned out for Toho Studios, but they would try again unsuccessfully to set up a rematch to coincide with the company's 60th anniversary back in 1992. Just what would a Heisei-era's Godzilla vs. King Kong movie look like, and why wasn't this film made? These questions will soon answer, along with a look at how this version of King Kong would go on to inspire the creation of the Heisei-era's Mecha King Ghidorah. The unmade concept of Godzilla vs. King Kong was written by Shinji Nishikawa, a famous designer and manga artist who has worked with Toho Studios on the concepts and designs of kaiju like Biollante, King Ghidorah, and Mechagodzilla. In an interview with David Milner, Nishikawa was asked about the unmade Heisei version of King Kong vs. Godzilla, to which he said, I submitted a story outline for that movie. Since King Kong was going to be in it, I felt that one of the main characters had to be a woman. So I came up with a female scientist who saw King Kong only as an object with which to experiment. She was even going to turn him into a cyborg. You heard that right, the 90s Toho version of King Kong could have been a cyborg. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a moment to just look at the regular non-cyborg King Kong and how he'd look in a Heisei Godzilla film. The Heisei era was very much like the time it existed in the 90s, where everything was loud and over the top. Godzilla here would be massively overpowered when compared to a show of counterpart. Taking this into account, just what would they do with King Kong? First off, he'd be big, like the biggest King Kong to appear on film until recently with Legendary's own Kong. The 1933 Kong was tiny, scaled at 18 feet on the island and 24 feet in New York. The King Kong from the 1976 remake was scaled at 42 feet on Skull Island and 55 feet in New York. Toho's Kong from King Kong vs. Godzilla was 45 meters or 148 feet tall, the tallest at the time and a good match for the 50 meter Showa Godzilla. But the Heisei Godzilla stood at 80 meters tall at this point in the era, or just over 262 feet high. So to make the fight even, as almost all Godzilla films have been when it comes to height matchups, we can guess that here, King Kong would be around 80 meters tall as well. The legendary Kong of the 1970s during Kong of Skull Island was only 31.6 meters or 104 feet tall, and it looks like Kong will be closer to legendary Godzilla's height for their upcoming matchup, and he stood at 108 meters or 355 feet in 2014 and swelled up to 119.8 meters or 393 feet for Godzilla King of the Monsters. So that means that the older Kong of Skull Island would be at least 350 feet or 106.7 meters tall with this Heisei version standing tall in second place. So now that we know how big this King Kong would likely be, let's talk about those cyborg upgrades. Could this be the boost that he would need in order to face off with a true powerhouse like the Heisei era's Godzilla? Now this is an early Heisei Godzilla, so he's still at 80 meters tall versus the 100 meter height that he'd grow to later on, but if he faced off with a non-powered up King Kong, Godzilla would easily have the upper hand. Looking at how this upgrade could take place, I guess I could see a situation where the cyborg transformation was done after the first meeting and fight between Kong and Godzilla, where King Kong may have been left for dead or at the very least badly beaten. This could lead to someone giving him the robotic implants so that he could not only survive, but now he may even have the power needed to defeat Godzilla. King Kong did have lightning powers back in King Kong vs. Godzilla the Showa era, but we didn't see them used in King Kong Escapes, so there's no telling if they would make a return here. To be honest, if they did give King Kong a boost other than the cyborg upgrades, I'd rather they used a Mothra or Rodan sacrificial power-up giving us a burning, electric, or some other kind of attribute. We've also seen Kong use trees as a weapon, and he's got his axe for the legendary matchup, so it's very possible that he'd arm himself this time. With Godzilla spamming his atomic breath attacks in this era like no other, 
King Kong will have to find a way to dodge or negate them like Kong of Skull Island was able to do if he plans to survive, let alone win the fight. Without knowing how Toho would have designed their new take on King Kong, we can only hope that it looked closer to the 1976 remake than it would to those goofy looking Showa cousins. To me, a Heisei King Kong should be quick, powerful, and bigger than ever before, but even this would most likely not be enough to take on Godzilla. But a Cyborg Kong might just stand a chance. He could be covered in some kind of durable earth metal for added defense. Remember now, no King Ghidorah or Mecha G has happened yet in this era, so there aren't any exotic space metals on Earth at this point. Perhaps it would be these upgrades that would finally give King Kong some resistance to Godzilla's breath attacks. The added metal weight may even put more oomph behind those punches and kicks, but I think a lightweight metal would be a better option, as Kong wouldn't want to lose his main advantage to Godzilla, his agility. You can bet that a cybernetic King Kong would have new attacks complete with ranged weaponry. Heck, everyone including Mothra had beam attacks in the 90s, so it would make sense. Just imagine a King Kong with long range attacks like missiles and lasers, and up close weapons like blades, or maybe even something like Kiryu's Mazer Blade. A nice homage to the electric Showa Kong, but also a far cry from the original King Kong. Unfortunately, the concept for this movie was done at a time when both Turner Entertainment and Universal Pictures each claimed the rights to King Kong. However, it would be Turner who would block the use of Kong by Toho, a tough pill to swallow considering that Turner would later lose their own King Kong rights battle to Universal. However, the ideas for a human-built cyborg monster would not go unused, as Godzilla vs. King Kong's outline would go through enough changes to eventually become 1991's Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, where Ghidorah was turned into Mecha King Ghidorah at the film's climax, obviously inspired by King Kong's cyborg upgrades. This makes me wonder how much of the story was there back in the King Kong scripts. Just imagine it, the Futurians placing a baby gorilla back in time, turning it into King Kong. Now, baby gorilla would likely be better received than the Dorats were, but just imagine if they left three gorillas. A terrifying thought. Now I would bet that the time travel addition to the story was not part of the original King Kong outline, but I do wonder if King Kong would have been the hero like he was portrayed to be in the Showa era. If so, I could see a plot where Godzilla attacks and King Kong is used to stop him. Godzilla beats the heck out of Kong, so they upgrade him to a cyborg. Godzilla was neutral at best in the Heisei era, so it seems like this is the best approach. Although I suppose, if they wanted to make King Kong the antagonist, I can imagine a story where Kong attacks Japan, then Godzilla is awoken to fight him. He does so, defeating Kong, but then goes on to further rampage Japan, thusly making the humans create a cyborg Kong to defeat or draw Godzilla away from the mainland. Or for a different take, maybe some evil group is controlling King Kong, using him to destroy cities, so Japan awakens Godzilla to stop him. He does so and wins, so the bad guys give King Kong that cybernetic boost. Personally, I'm glad that this storyline wasn't used on film with King Kong. Ghidorah to me is a much better choice as a cyborg than King Kong would be. But I do wish that they would have made an alternate version of Godzilla vs. King Kong for the Heisei era. This film with the right script could have been huge. King Kong was still really popular in the 1990s. On top of that, the Heisei movies were pretty sparse in the States on VHS and didn't really show up here until years later when DVDs came out. You can bet that if they were able to make a Godzilla vs. King Kong movie back then, that those films would have been much more popular here, and we likely wouldn't have had the big delay in getting them here. It really would have been a huge boost to the Godzilla franchise. And you can see it today with Godzilla vs. Kong. Not only are Godzilla and King Kong fans pumped for this movie, but people who never watch kaiju films will pay attention when King Kong and Godzilla go head to head. What are your thoughts on Heisei era's Godzilla vs. King Kong? Let's discuss down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Your likes, shares, comments, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping the channel grow. Take care, and I hope to see you next time.